Hello and welcome everybody to this session here at OER 22. I am very excited in a moment to introduce you to Erica Hargreave, who is going to lead the session for us. And I also wanted to encourage you all to have a look at the other resources um, that are available from the OER conference. Um, and if you're still within the, the time frame of the conference month, then also our social space on Discord. And I wanted to say a, a very big thank you to Erica for um, sharing a really important topic with us um, here today. And I'm really looking forward to hearing all about it. So Erica, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to you. Welcome. Uh, thanks so much, Marin. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to be here. And I am thrilled to be sort of chatting um, sort of web, web three stuff and uh, ways of using web three to sort of build sustainability and creativity and innovation uh, behind your open educational initiatives. Um, so this, this was a journey that I started on a few years back and actually spoke on um, sort of the early stages of uh, not when I was, I hadn't been wised up to at Web3 then, but uh, on, on sort of our sustainable funding um, journey to sort of find different ways of building sort of sustainable funding um, pathways into open educational projects, as well as sort of storytelling projects for social good. Uh, and uh, sort of a journey that, uh, that, uh, that this conference was, uh, was part of the early story of, so, so it's great to be back. Um, and, and, and also that, you know, um, David Porter from, from, from this, from, from the open ed community, um, sort of gave me several nudges and, and helped, uh, help sort of, uh, propel me on the way, way with this, this journey. So, so. Uh, I'm very thankful to him for that. Um, so my whole journey into Web3, um, it began, and I, I know I spoke about it at last year's conference, but it began with the, the web monetization standard. Um, and so, Sorry, Erica, just to jump yeah. in there. Um, I'm not sure if you're sharing any visuals, but I'm not coming through oh, just yet. Okay, uh, do you see my face or no? Um, at the moment, we're seeing nothing. Oh, you're seeing nothing. Okay. <laughs> so I would be, I just wanted to double check. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. Can now you see we can my see face you. now? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Kat. Hello, you Erica. Hello there. Okay. Awesome. Sorry to interrupt that, you. Sorry, that's funny. Yeah, no, I'm, um, um, I will bring up some visuals at, uh, uh, throughout, um, but I'd sort of stage this as a bit of a different, uh, different style of more workshop based where, where we were going to go spend some time on a mirror board and stuff like that. Um, I will put up those in our, um, uh, in the discord community a little later on, um, after, the, after the talk, just, just in case people want to kind of explore around and, and experiment with ideas within that. Uh, but, um, yeah, do you want me to start again from the top now that you can see me or? No, we're fine. I think we'll just okay. keep running now. <laughs> it was only a minute. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, sorry, we're a bit of a troubled, uh, troubled teenager here. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so where my story began with sort of exploring Web3, uh, was with the web monetization standard, which is actually considered to be um, a, a, an API that is um, open web. However, the way it's currently working is, um, when I get into sort of explaining what that is, is um, uh, COIL is, is currently the main, is well, it's the only provider right now for um, the web monetization standard. And their way of, of of making it work is is with a digital wallet and so for those of you that are new to web3 um basically web3 is the is the whole web that's that that's tied to elements of the blockchain so with the web monetization standard while it's open web it is also um because of because of a connection um right now and how it's working it, it does have a connection with um 
with with the blockchain um and so it's it, it it can be considered to be web3 as well as as well as open web but i'm going to just sort of take you through and introduce you to some of these things like the web monetization standard um a new sort of um uh, Web3 application that I discovered the other day, which is uh, using um, using Brave Browser to to earn for your towards your digital content, and uh, and then further going into um, to some NFT experiments that we've got going on um, at present. Um, and the beauty with all of this is there are ways that uh, the open ed community can play with all of this to keep their content open um but at the same time be earning towards uh, making that content sustainable uh and we're certainly doing that uh with the experiments we've been running in the last year uh which has just been with the web monetization standard we're making our maintenance costs on our content sustainable so so the web monetization standard pays for all of our maintenance costs on on our various digital applications and things like that and um uh because of some of the um um additional sort of bonus um uh ways of earning in that community over the um the last year we've actually done more than build maintenance fees. We've built some experimental money. And so that's what I've been, been using with our early NFT experiments right now. But I will take you through all that. Um, quickly here, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I'm going to take you through to... Are you seeing um, my current screen here that says how to become a web monetization yep, content creator? Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to quickly just close the door because there's a loud lawnmower outside. Figure you don't need to hear that. So, um, so as I mentioned, what the web monetization standard is is it's um, well. As, as the Artist Rescue Trust likes to call it, it's a, a financial fist bump between a creator and their audience. Um, but basically, it's, um, it's, it's a JavaScript API that allows for the creation of a payment stream to go from a website visitor to a website. Now, just because there's this ability for that payment stream to happen, that doesn't mean that anybody's putting up any uh, paywalls or anything like that on the content. Um, if you look right now on my screen, you'll see there's this little coil button and this little green thing right there. And that right there is because I do have a coil membership. So that means that um, normally it would mean I'm paying $5 a month US to support other to support the content of creatives online that uh, have web monetized their content. And so when I'm at, whenever I'm on somebody's content that's web monetized, there's a little stream of payments that goes through. Um, but right now there's an opportunity um, that, uh, to, um, that has been offered through um, Mozilla Festival, but that is open to other people who go and sign up for a free MozFest uh, ticket. Um, they'll get sent a six-month prepaid uh, membership from COIL to basically spend their money on visiting different digital content online that is web monetized. And uh, so I'm kind of hoping that... Um, um, we can get this message out to the open ed community so that uh, those some of those accounts can be used to support some great open educational resources out there. Now, the beauty is that uh, for somebody's content to be web monetized, they do not um, have to pay into this membership. That is entirely and completely free. Uh, and to do that, you just go to coil.com backslash creator. And... Uh, um, it'll allow anybody to go in and start to monetize their content for free. Um, and as I said, um, you know, even if I didn't have 
that membership, for example, this content that I'm on right here, this is all freely accessible. Same thing with all of our story to go content, um, like right here. While the site is web monetized, um, uh, there's no paywalls. Anybody can can access this this for free. Um, and so what I've done recently is in addition to on story to go where we've created a course and teaching people all about how to um, to start web monetizing their content so that they can start earning to their open educational resources their open courses um, things like these articles that that I've been writing on story to go um, there's um, with that there um i've i've built a whole pile of tutorials that walks you through all the steps and it also explains what web monetization is and what web monetization is not so it's not anything to do with data mining affiliate marketing uh advertising um rather it's it's about making the web sort of a more equitable place so that uh Creators and creators from all around the world and different parts of the world can um, can can earn um, on equitable footing, you know, from these different um, um, from different people sort of exploring exploring and spending time on their content online. So that is all right there. I will share links to all of this in the Discord so that anybody who wants to go through and learn about it um, can. Um, when I first learned about it and uh, initiated this on our sites, it literally, I did it within, well, the whole initiation thing. The, the toughest part, and this is like the biggest uh, block right now for people sort of getting into this community are the digital wallets. Um, and so the longest part of setting this whole thing up was setting up a digital wallet. Um, uh, you're probably your best bet is to go. There's two right now that are working with it, which are um, Uphold and GitHub. Uh, I do know that in the UK, um, a lot of people tend to go. I think I think GitHub might be out of the UK, but uh, Uphold um, seems to be the one that's been working better for and has been a bit easier for a lot of people. But I do admit that's the one hiccup and had I not kind of been nudged in this direction by David Porter and had not been like, you know, um, kind of done the research on the Interledger Foundation, who's, uh, who's the foundation that's behind the web monetization standard and, and realized that, you know, that everything was above board. Um, it, it, it would have, you know, it would have been kind of, it would have been a stumbling block for me just because it's, um, um, if, if you haven't set up a digital wallet before, it, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a bit of new ground, a bit, a bit outside, certainly outside of my comfort zone initially. But that is, that is, as I said, the biggest stumbling block. The rest of it is relatively easy. Um, and in even setting up the digital wallet isn't so, depending on where you live in the world, it isn't so hard. There's, there's still some places that because uh, of um, different government policies with financing and stuff like that, that it's not, um, that it, it's a bit more difficult to set up or, or it can't be set up yet. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, if you, once you get through the steps of, of setting it up and get through the uncomfortableness of, of something new, um, the rest of this is super, super easy. The first day um, that, uh, that, that, that I set up everything on our site, I got sent my first like little notification from Uphold saying that uh, that we um, we earned a little bit of money that day. Um, and uh, since then, um, there's barely ever a day that I don't get that little email from Uphold saying, you know, here's how much you you've you've earned from your digital content today. Um, so similarly, I'll share this, but this sort of walks you through the steps of getting startup, like getting set up with um, the web monetization standard. It's one of the beauties of it. And one of the things I quite love about it is I can actually 
have my different writers and teachers um, on story to go set up a payment pointer of their own on the back end of um, like on our author page on um, we're running our sites off of WordPress. And so there's a WordPress plugin for it that makes it really easy. And so on each of our authors pages, um, they can set up their own um, payment pointer which you know kind of ends up being like a nice little pat on the back for them because it's kind of like they're receiving well it's like it's basically they're receiving royalties for 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 their writing or for for their course content so um this young fellow here is bjorn he's our our newest writer on our team and has been creating our nft art for us and so i i sort of nudged bjorn in the direction of uh of setting up of you know sort of getting his payment pointer before I shared his first article here on on the journey he's taking us through as an art therapy student and it was during Mozfest so it was why we were sort of um, running with this these experimental accounts where Mozfest is has given out these uh, six months of prepaid membership so people at Mozfest have these accounts so when they're going and looking at his content which they were at the festival um, he started to earn um, and right now because of those accounts too this is the other exciting bit with them is when I go here, there is an experimental feature right now where people can um, get, uh, can give a tip. So um, I, I've, I've already tipped um, Bjorn for his articles before. And so, cause I've only got a limited amount of tip money and I'm hoping if some people in the open ed community uh, start to web monetize their content that I can go spend some tips in the open ed community. So I'm not gonna not gonna tip him right now. But basically, um, this is one of the beauties is it is it allows you to at the moment send send tips and they are all prepaid by coil. So it's like this little bonus money that coil is giving us at the moment uh, to to spend on on great content out there and content that's doing good. So yeah um so this is part of what i've been so excited about and so there's there, and there's all sorts of really cool things there's ways of of uh web monetizing podcasts there is mural which is this really kind of fun interactive uh storytelling tool that um, allows you to you know add layers of sound and video and photos and written words to to create these 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 beautiful sort of art storytelling pieces there's um, ways of web monetizing mainstream platforms. Like um, if we go to Coil here, I'm already signed in. So I'm just going to go to my settings here. And uh, if I go into my web monetized content, you can see that I have um, web monetized our different YouTube channels. That literally just took me clicking through to the channel. And um, um, you can see here. Um, you know, you get the little sign in thing from 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 Google between coil and it takes a matter of seconds to do that. So yeah, so that's been um, that's been kind of um, something I've been really enjoying exploring and uh, using and, uh, and and sharing this last year. And uh, right now there's some some great opportunities for people in the open ed community to experiment with this and to to share a little bit of that um, that goodness that coil is giving everybody around um, I'll also just state here too the nice thing right now with um, those accounts is when you go to set those up they don't ask for it's not like one of those things where they ask for you to put in your um, your your wallet like they don't ask you to put in, you know, your credit card or anything like that. At the end of the six months, nobody is going to uh, ask you to continue paying for that. So, um, so yeah, so so that's great. And you can still have your content all all web monetized. Um, now I think, and I'm just checking back here because I think there's a comment. Uh, it was just me um, posting in case anybody has questions. So um, oh, I will give you us. a shout out. Yeah, I'll give you a shout okay. out, Erica, if any particular questions come up. Okay, great. Um, and Mark, um, just just so you're so you're aware, we we kind of um, we were originally going to go through this. I've been sort of 
changing how I've been going through this simply because the fact that uh, initially it was just Marin and I hanging out. Um, so I did have a more interactive presentation plan. So if you do want to sort of um, dart into the more interactive stuff, I'm happy to do that. If you would rather uh, sort of just just listen and learn, um, I can do that too. So 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 there's there's those various opportunities to the thing. I'm going to share now that we've got more people here. I'm going to share in the link. Um, there's this is something that um, that I've kind of started doing from that whole web um, that whole Mozfest community online. But I've got a uh, a document that is a little Google Doc. It's got a lot of the links that I'm talking about in the presentation in it today. And for some reason, it's not letting me add it to the chat. Huh. OK. Um, yeah, the chat's not working. Oh, um, you oh just that's click fine. On everyone. In the chat. Yeah, Sorry? If you just click on everyone, that's where the chat is. Ah, yes, is. I see now. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. <laughs> awesome. That's so, it. So in, in that document there, it's like it's a way both for people who are who are on the on the chat today to uh, to connect with each other and and share each other's contact details. But there's also uh, a variety, uh, like all the different links that I'm talking about within the within the conference to, or within the um, the session the workshop today, um, and a space for asking questions both uh, both during this time and uh, and afterwards. Um, and then I'm also gonna just uh, share because I've got a brainstorming board that I set up in Miro. Uh, so I will share the link to that as well. And I believe I put it on our, yes, I did put it on our document. Uh, so I'll also add that in our, our chat here too. So um, now, so that's that's one of the the web three three ways that that I've been earning. Now I had a friend who came up for a visit um, two weekends ago, and he shared with me another way of earning, which I was unfamiliar with. Um, but it's it's brave. Um, it's a new well, it's not a new browser. They've been around for a while, but it's one of these browsers that has been uh, web browsers that's been designed so that um, and you can see. Here it's been designed with kind of the the idea of privacy in mind, and uh, you know people so that you know big tech's not not mining all of your data. Um, and so he told me that um, one of the things that they're doing is when you set up Brave on on your like as you know as as a, a search browser for yourself, um, you can it normally blocks all the ads. But you can say that you're fine with seeing some ads, uh, and you will start to earn um, in their cryptocurrency, which is called, I believe, BAT. I, I don't know what the bigger acronym, because I've only been playing with it for the, a couple of days. Um, but the beauty with this whole um, BAT system uh, is it also has this area where you can also be a creator um, and you can sign up as a creator so and the beauty with this is the things that you can sign up and link are your own website your YouTube channel your twitch your your reddit account um, uh, I believe I'm trying to think for a second there I was thinking you could set up your discord too but I don't think you can yet um, but but there's other things too like your Twitter account um, and so I did that the other day and once again it took me, you know, and I've got a fair number of accounts that that could be web monetized and I think I did the whole like all the accounts within an hour. So um you can see right now like, you know, our our romancings which is our travel travel um storytelling um YouTube. It's um it's it's connected uh, along with like you know with our, our various different um, uh, media platforms and so so I only really started experimenting with this last week but it's telling me that um, that so far you know in the the first couple of days of, of 
playing with this. Um, uh, you know, I got sort of 0 0.401 bat, so it's not earning me any huge amount of money, but this is like just these little tiny ways that you can kind of earn towards your um, different open educational pieces out there and they don't create any barriers to anybody entering them and using them so it's kind of seems to me like it's a win-win especially since it allows me to web monetize like to basically earn in multiple ways from for example our youtube channels they're web monetized using the web monetization standard plus we're using we're using um i'm now using um uh, brave and uh, they're they're earning that way too and when you sign up as a creator it actually also allows you to accept tips so if you go to my um, while I'm using brave if you go to my Twitter account you will see and it's not just my Twitter account it's everybody's Twitter accounts here that um, it it allows me to to tip different people. So if I wanted to, I could press tip and I could send Stephanie here, um, you know, uh, a certain amount of money or a certain amount of bat for her post. Um, now I, I don't, because I only started doing this the other day, I don't really have much bat yet. And I think it hasn't gone into my wallet yet. Um, unlike the web monetization standard, it doesn't seem to happen immediately. Um, so so I can't actually tip anybody at the moment. Uh, so I will not demonstrate that right now. Um, and, and you can see like it's got this little dashboard. So so far this month and we're only on day three, I've made, you know, 0.705 bat, which is about 42 cents US. So which, you know, sure, it's not a huge amount of money, but it uh, um, I, I figure, you know, all those little bits and pieces towards our open ed um, resources are, are are a good thing. And it's otherwise just money I'd be leaving on the table. Now, um, when we were talking about the web monetization standard too, and we were talking about their wallets, um, this wallet with Brave, while well, they have their own wallet that you can set up on here, they also work with Two different wallets and one of them is uphold so so i've 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 linked mine to to my uphold wallet here um so yeah so that's just a new discovery that i had the other day and uh um um why we've got mark on the call um mark uh you're just waking up in california i'm doing the same thing in bc um um Mark, I don't know if you're feeling in an interactive mood right now or if you just want to listen, um, but uh, if you are, um, over on our sort of experimenting with Web3 and open education, our mirror board here, um, I've got this section here on, um, and I don't know if you missed the, the opening part of our talk, but what do you think about when you hear Web3? And if you're if you just want to listen right now, just just type in the chat that you're just happy listening. Thanks, Erica. Um, I think Mark's saying happy listening. I'm really enjoying this as well. Um, OK. OK, so I will hop over into our NFT experiments then uh, and sort of show you where I took this. Um, where I took these experiments this last fall, um, I've been having fun using project work in my master's, which is now very closely nearing its end. Although I've probably been doing the master's much longer than most people, you know, spend doing theirs. Um, um, uh, simply because you know my part doing it part time sort of thing. Um, but uh, uh, so I used um, a master's project in the fall to start diving down into seeing what all this buzz about non NFTs, which are non fungible tokens are online. And if there was a way of utilizing them for sustainable funding solutions with open education and open culture. Um, and so one of the things like um, there's, there's a lot of 
confusion about what exactly non non fungible tokens are and around ownership and things like that around them. And I know it was a bit of a barrier for me when I was sort of approaching this question and not really being sure if there was a way of tying um, this with open education because of this whole idea of ownership when it comes to NFTs. And I was also a little bit leery because I was thinking, you know, for me, where this would be really great is if there was a way that NFTs could provide seed funding to our our different web series and documentaries and things like that. But everywhere where I'd seen people doing examples of that, um, they were using it in a way that um, they were creating like collectible tokens that then um, were linked to the um, the series and it was about giving ex like exclusive audience access to that group of people. Now, obviously with open educational materials, um, sort of a token to create exclusive access kind of doesn't really mesh together. Uh, and so what I sort of when I when I started kind of going down down this road and 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 looking into to this um, first thing was tackling okay what exactly is a non fungible token and you know I know we've all heard things like you know people selling their tweets so so uh, I I did a workshop on this yesterday and and that was one of the questions in the workshop was the, was the thought that you know an NFT could be a tweet. Well, no, it can't be a tweet. Um, but what it can be is um, basically these non-fungible tokens are a digital asset um, that has a smart contract um, attached to it. And that smart contract exists on the blockchain. And so, um, the non-fungible token could be a screenshot of that tweet. Um, now, and that does bring into question, okay, where is the value in that? And uh, as we've recently seen in the news where there was, I think the first tweet that ever went out on Twitter, um, somebody sold the screenshot of and uh, made a ridiculous amount of money. And now that ridiculous amount of money is a much, 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 much smaller amount of money. So the person who bought that NFT lost money on it. But if you think about it, anybody can take a screenshot of somebody's tweet. So, so, so there wasn't kind of that lasting power with that that NFT. Um, where some of these the the more interesting things are happening around uh, kind of you know value around NFTs um, is around things like um, like. Um, so where these uh, NFTs unlock different sort of experiences. And so when I reference like the, tel the you know, sort of another media source that, that was earning in this way, that was um, a web series called Stoner Cats. Um, and they have totally funded this web series to ridiculous amounts of money on um on basically selling these different collectibles um uh f like from the series um and anybody who owns one of these collectibles has exclusive access to the series um now so granted there's a lot of famous people behind this project but i i decided like you know well, I started looking around and I started finding some other projects that were more, more had heart behind them. Um, and in this case, it's actually got heart in the name because it's the Anatomical Hearts Project. Um, and that we're doing things that were all about social good out there. So this is kind of a similar idea, although these ones aren't... Um, Oh, they, I do think there is a sort of unlock in them um, because I think you might get access to the coloring book, although I'm not entirely sure on that point. Um, but 
this this is a woman um and in my journey i i met her and have spoken with her a number of times and she's she's absolutely lovely um and she started to create these um anatomical hearts um pictures when her daughter um had three open heart surgeries um within i believe the first 11 years of her life um and so this was kind of her coping and her way of dealing with it and so at the beginning of the pandemic she actually started to turn these anatomical hearts into a coloring book and then somebody sort of nudged her in the direction of um of selling them as nfts and so she's done quite well from that and if you click on the different hearts um you discover that um oh she hasn't got them all mapped out here um but i believe there's a certain amount of this uh money from her hearts that goes to a charity um uh and uh and then there's also royalties attached to these hearts so that if anybody resells them she will get a certain percent back in royalties as the artist uh now where i found something that was even more interesting was this project called Emotion Monsters. Um, and this was born out of um, this woman who's, um, she's an artist, she's a DJ, and she is a medical school student. And she was finding that when she, kids were coming into the emergency uh, room, and they were exhibiting men, like emotional health issues, uh, they weren't getting treated very well. Um, and so she wanted to de destigmatize um, sort of, you know, hang ups around to health. And she decided to like start this campaign of doing that uh, through creating these different emotion monsters that are getting sold as NFTs. Uh, her original ones were pictures. These these video ones are are, are new. But um, the sales, and she, she outlines it here. Now, part of the interesting part about this is she's, as a part of the sales, she's giving um, the rights to make derivatives of these monsters. Um, uh, but if people make a derivative of those monsters and they sell them out there, uh, she's requested that uh, I think 10% I think of the sales from that go to some sort of mental health charity. Uh, I think she gets 10% in royalties back as the artist. And uh, in her own sales that she's doing out here too, she's got both those two things in there when she's making her own sales, but she's also, um, she's also, uh, um, uh, sort of the money is going towards making a, uh, a children's book um, that features different emotion monsters in there. And I believe with the NFT, anybody who's got the NFT gets access to the, um, to these emotion monsters as well so, or sorry not the, to, to the, the the book um that's coming out and so this was as amazing I erica sorry to interrupt you i was just gonna oh, say no. great i'm definitely gonna be checking them out oh i know i know and the story behind the whole thing is fabulous i actually um i learned about her and i've got it in in the first my initial write-up that i did it's it's in there um there's a link to a podcast that i believe was on ed surge um all as they were sort of initially exper like exploring this whole idea of nfts um and yeah it's it's right yeah ed surge right there and and they interviewed her on it and, she, and she's just lovely and i've since like mm. engaged with her on twitter mm. and um yeah i that absolutely love brilliant. what she's doing yeah yeah and just also and, a timing heads up we're in our last oh. five minutes okay so so yeah so what i've what I've been doing is I I sort of took this idea. I liked I've I've mapped what we started doing based on her stuff, but I made the initial mistake of the early days of our stuff. So and this is naturally ours, and this is just our first rendition, which which we're currently remapping out right now. But Bjorn, the artist I showed you earlier, he's been creating these different images based on the first season of of naturally ours for us uh, with the idea that every image that when we sold it, you know, there would be 10% would go to uh, nature charity in the areas that we're filming. 10% uh, would go 
back to Bjorn as our artist uh, to um, so that he could, um, you know, make a little extra in royalties towards his um, his his education. Um, and uh, and then the rest would go to, you know, both filming future seasons and the educational materials behind our um, uh and our, yeah, but our, our, like the building of our educational materials tied to the series. Uh, and so we weren't, so with these, I, because obviously I can't pay him properly to create so many images that we could, like, we'd either have to price these, 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 these tokens uh, really, really high. Um, so I decided you, you can actually create from one project, you can create as many tokens from that project as you want. So I tried initially, I thought, okay, well, we'll, we'll create 99 of these and we'll charge, you know, on par with what uh, the anatomical hearts was charging. Um, the problem is, is people do seem to want this exclusivity in, in these collectible tokens that they're doing, especially like, cause we, I'm not famous, so <laughs> it's not like the stoner cats where they're gonna, you know, just blindly like, you know, throw throw money at what what we're doing. Uh, and even though, you know, each of these comes with links to our series and the educational content, uh, it's open educational. So it's it's. I mean, we don't specify that in there, but uh, but we also don't tell them they're getting exclusive content. Um, and so. Uh, so this wasn't really, I'd started realizing that this probably wasn't going to work. Um, um, and, and there were like some extras that they would get, like, for example, our full length documentaries. Um, those ones we typically only do at film fest and, um, cause we have licenses with them with a uh, mainstream broadcasting site. They're usually not like openly available the way our, the, the, the smaller web series versions are. So we are gonna make that accessible to them. Um, uh, and then we were also playing on the idea, but mind you, everybody is has got access to this. Um, when you're building NFTs, they're really big on there being a Discord community for kind of behind the scenes and to connect with the creators. So usually you wanna have your NFTs also linked to your Discord community. So, so that was gonna be an aspect of it, but it wasn't working. So what we have done is we realized that what people have been doing in this space is they've been creating what's called generative art. And I've got a link in our document that explains how to do it. And it's actually not very, like it's, at first I thought, oh, how are we possibly gonna do that? But it's not too, too difficult. You basically create layers to your artwork. So um, we've got these base owl layers now um, and Bjorn's created a whole pile of them. And then there's other base layers that we have that he's created like uh, different um, hats um, and different beaks and things like that. And so what they've done is you then run it through a generative program, which is all free and all openly accessible. And I've added links within our, our Google doc to how to get to this stuff. Um, but when you run it through the, um, the program. Um, so I just ran it through once um, where I sort of ran it through to create 20 owls and you end up getting all these different owls. Now this all of a sudden becomes um, accessible to, and I could see this with the penguins from, um, from the conference to create something like this, where you've got these different layers, and then you can, each of these becomes its own individual token that there's only one copy of in existence. So that they now become like, almost like these collectible playing cards. And we then put the same kind of policies and that are like the same sort of, you know, access where they're a token that goes to supporting our series and all the educational contents. Um, there, and you know, we can think about doing like a couple of little extras that we might just do for our token holders later on. Like maybe like there's a monthly chat with, you know, different people involved in the project, whether it's like Kelly doing a filmmaking tutorial or, 
um, me doing some sort of nature nerdy um, bit out in the woods with people teaching them about a plant or something like that. Uh, so, so, so this is how like we're kind of approaching this at this stage of the game. Um, and we're finding right now we're in the, the zone of um, exploring different environmental, environmentally friendly blockchains to be sharing these on. Um, and for those people that are interested in that, I can get more into that. Uh, um, happy to sort of set up a conversation and, uh, and chat more about that and sort of, um, we're actually with that, um, we're actually, and I'm just going to click off of this, the screen share right now, but we're actually, um, um, do you know where to close the screen share, Maren? That's easy. Yeah, uh, just click that little oh, round circle. Yeah, <laughs> there. that's it. Good. Yeah, okay. you got it. Uh, so yeah, so we're, um, I've been meeting with a, a group of um, different artists um, from all sorts of different disciplines every Tuesday. Um, and we have chats about NFTs and different ways of using them for social good and and all sorts of things like that. And anybody who wants to be invited to any of those discussions, um, uh, shoot me an email. It'll be in that Google Doc, which I will share over in the Discord community. So, so we can we can chat. We can we can brainstorm. Um, like when you're talking open ed to like, uh, there's all sorts of other different ways that that could be used besides besides the way we're using to build stuff out there right now. Um, one of like you know, uh, there's been some talk around, um, you know, actually creating um, when people want a certificate from an open educational course so they you know maybe so maybe there's a little added bit where they're paying for something at the end of of the course to to have their work evaluated through, through um and maybe that is tied to uh, a smart contract that basically is tokenized and uh and is 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 a proof that they've 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 done the work to earn whatever certificate um, or whatever badge. Um, uh, so there's 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 that's that's another example of of how this could be utilized with with open education. And it, it's really all about you know sort of you know starting to brainstorm and dream. Um, uh, one of the conversations that came up in last week's um, chat with the, these artist groups is how some gallery owners are now taking uh, real paintings. And uh, so this is just a painting, an art, like a um, sort of a sort of artsy photograph painting. And what they would do is they would take the whole painting and then break it into uh, like a thousand little tiny images of that. And then they're then selling that those images, um, like at least half of them as NFTs out there. But where that where the smart contract with that whole thing is then linked to the original piece of artwork. And when they sell the original piece of artwork in the gallery, um, the remaining of the NFTs go out with the original piece of artwork. And everybody who owns a piece like an NFT attached to the painting, then gets a little piece of the sale of the original work. And because there's a smart contract attached to it, it means that everybody else down the line, like in the future, that are connected to those um, that, um, you know, have one of the NFTs also earn a little bit. And then there's like... Um, there's the whole side too of, um, and I don't know if this stat's right. I have to look it up. But one of the women in our our our, our group um, last week um, mentioned that apparently, 80% of the people buying and selling NFTs on this one marketplace uh, were under the age of 18. Now, if that's the case, then we probably want to start thinking about like having some NFTs like education around you know determining values around things like this and actually would work really really well for a business class like of uh, you know exploring you know the whole concept of buying and trading and uh and things like that in there and in our sort of early exploration of some of the um uh environmentally friendly um blockchains 
uh, in marketplaces. We, I think I stumbled upon that because I was finding on like the Tezo blockchain, a lot of the pieces of artwork were sort of valued super, super low, like just at a few cents to a few dollars for a piece. And I'm fairly certain that is that younger kid audience kind of experimenting with this and learning all about buying and selling and trading through this. So yeah, there's, um, it's, it's really all about, it's in that space right now where it's all about thinking up the possibilities and creating those possibilities um, rather than, and I, and I think that's where this is exciting and where it's exciting to kind of like, I'm hoping to find some people out there that, you know, kind of want to join in the conversation on, um, on how we can play with this with, with open education and, uh, and create some of those opportunities out there that, that might not exist yet or that nobody's dreamed up yet. And as a result, then wow. sort of you know, give everybody's projects a boost up. <laughs> Congratulations. That is a very exciting vision. And I have to say, Erica, I learned a lot of new stuff um, just by listening to you. And I'm definitely inspired. Um, I've got an art background, so I'm very interested oh, in, nice. in joining in with that. I'm just going to wait a moment and to see if Mark has any particular questions, but um, we still have time for that. But um, because we want to give a bit more um, space for discussion, I am going to stop the recording here. So from us here all at OER22, thank you so much for an amazing presentation.